Welcome to FPL, mate. Your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. And it's time in game week 38 to do the final 100 experts video of the year. Guys, I've really enjoyed making these videos this year. Hopefully, you've really enjoyed watching them as well. And looking forward to going again with them next season. So, if you've enjoyed the 100 experts video, let's leave a like. Let's subscribe. Uh, but let's have a look at our experts before we do anything else. So, here are 100 FPL experts, pundits, content creators that have very kindly helped with their data this game week. We're going to have a look at what they're up to this game week, who they're transferring, who they're captaining, what they're doing, and hopefully build some trends. And guys, there are definitely some trends this week. I want to give a special shout out uh, to these guys this week because I appreciate that a lot of us are waiting for early team news. So it's a little bit harder to uh, kind of give an idea of what you're up to this game week when we don't fully know yet. So Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate everyone who helped me out this week. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to build some really, really nice data for you guys all to watch today. I, I think it's good anyway. So let's have a look. So in general, 50% are making just one transfer. 38% are making two transfers. 6% are making three transfers. So don't worry, guys. There will be a few people taking hits this week. So if you are feeling that you may be wanting to take a hit yourself, then uh, you're not going to be alone. Don't worry too much about that. 6% are actually using their free hit as well. I can't believe so many people have managed to hold on to their free hit to this stage of the season, but apparently they have. And 0% not making a transfer at all. It's definitely a week to make at least one transfer, guys. I mean, use it or lose it. It's not like you can roll it on to game week one of the following season. So use that transfer, guys. Um, but yeah, it's in general, a lot of transfers being made. I imagine there might be a few more by the time we hit deadline as well, but we've still got enough data here to uh, build some general trends, which I think you guys are going to appreciate. Before we do that, I want to have a look at the most popular Game Week 38 transfers in the world among all FBL managers. And Eberechi Eze is number one here. 100,000 uh, transfers in at time of recording. I can see that going to 200, 300, maybe even 400,000 transfers in by the time we hit the Game Week 38 deadline. He does seem to be the template differential, if that makes any sense. Loads of people are bringing him in. Uh, we've got Erdegaard there as well, and Wilson with pretty decent numbers. Harry Kane and Salah coming just behind them, and then uh, the numbers do drop a little bit off after that. But we do need to figure out, are these most popular players in the world also popular among our experts? Well, some of them are. So Ezra, uh, Erdegaard, Kane, Alvarez, and Watkins all have a little bit of interest among our experts. And I think Ezra, Erdegaard, Kane in particular, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Watkins, Maybe you're a little bit surprised to see that one. But yes, a few people are backing Watkins against Brighton. Uh, Alvarez, however, is an interesting one because he is a popular transfer in among our experts, but he's also a popular transfer out. So we're going to have a look at the in and out data in uh, just one moment. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Some people bringing him in, some people taking him out. People can't really make their minds up of whether Alvarez is a good pick or not. But anyway, uh, with that said, well, there are a few players here that are not being transferred in by our experts at all. And they are Wilson, Luke Shaw, Trent Alexander, Alexander Arnold and Brian and Bumo with uh, Salah, Allison and Saka kind of garnering a tiny bit of interest, but nothing significant. But yeah, Wilson, no one's bringing him in. In fact, he's been sold. We're going to see that in a second. People are actually selling Wilson. They are not interested in him for the final game week of the season against Chelsea. Maybe a little bit of a dead rubber game, a 1-1 kind of fixture. And Wilson, you never know how many minutes he's going to get, particularly in a meaningless game now that, uh, that Newcastle have secured top four. Uh, we've got Shaw and Trent Alexander-Arnold, and you guys are going to see very shortly that our experts are not interested in making transfers in defenders at all so you know if you've got Shaw if you've got Trent already great keep them if you don't have them yet uh it might be just a time to just pretty much ignore them uh but maybe maybe an exception with Trent because obviously he has that attacking threat but in general I think we want to be looking at attackers and no one's going for Mbumo maybe because he's playing Man City I guess that kind of makes sense but uh, let's have a look at some transfers out among our experts so, um, would you believe it? A fully fit Erling Haaland is the most popular transfer out of the game week among our experts. A lot of people not really fancying him against Brentford. And I find that crazy. I mean, let's be honest, 29 out of 94 transfer making uh, kind of experts is not like a huge amount. That's still like 
you know, 61, probably keeping Holland and 29 selling him. Like, you know, is, is that even right maths? No, it's it's not even the right maths. Uh, 71, should I say. Uh, but what I'm saying is, even though it looks like Erling Holland is the most popular transfer out, there's still the vast majority of our experts are keeping him. But I just do think that it's interesting that a lot of people are opting to sell him. Maybe they think that he's going to get rotated. Maybe they think he's not going to play uh, 90 minutes or slightly less minutes maybe in that game. And uh, we've got Karu Mitoma here, who is being sold quite heavily as well against Aston. Aston Villa, um, Brighton expected to rotate in that final game of the season. Mitama, who has played a lot of football recently, does deserve that rest. So he probably does get that in a Brighton team that can't move up or down the table anymore. So going to be a going to be a good opportunity to rest some players for that Brighton team. And that's why you can see McAllister slightly down the list there as well. Uh, Alexander Izak, people not impressed with how far on the left wing he has been playing at the moment. Pretty, uh, pretty depressing stuff for Izak owners, so they're willing to cut ties this game week. Grealish is being sold as well. He's been a, a really, really disappointing transfer for those of people who brought him in hoping to get something over the double game weeks recently. Just not really come off for Grealish, has it? Uh, we've got Bruno Fernandes, a couple of people selling him. Mares is well and then Martinelli injured a couple of people Alvarez Willock you know some just some uh, general players that not too many people own but maybe they're willing to sacrifice there but Erling Haaland main transfer out closely followed by Kaoru Mitoma and Izak is there and thereabouts as well in terms of transfers in uh, this starts to make a little bit more sense as to why Erling Haaland is being transferred out and that's because people are transferring in Harry Kane Mr Harold Kane himself potentially his final ever game for Tottenham Hotspur and a player who has been in scintillating form all season and nobody's really noticed because he's not Erling Haaland but guys I want to know actually in the comments how many goals this season do you think Harry Kane would have got if he was playing in that Man City team instead of Erling Haaland I think Kane could you know genuinely have just as good a season as Haaland if they if he had the same kind of team around him because Kane's team around him really has not been too good but regardless he's got a final game of the season against a really leaky Leeds team that are probably gonna get relegated potentially there uh which is quite sad news but Harry Kane is not going to care about that. He wants to score goals. Uh, that's what he does best. We've got Eberechi Eze here. So really, really popular transfer for pretty much everyone. I'll keep saying this. Eze is the differential for people who don't want a differential. Because trust me, by the time we hit deadline... Everyone is going to have Eze. I can imagine that he's going to be like 30, 40, 50% owned. He will not be a differential at all. So if you're bringing Eze in thinking, oh, I've got a nice differential pick here. Unfortunately, I don't think you do anymore. I think uh, everyone is seems to be heading in the same direction with this transfer. But template is template for a reason. And often the best, uh, the best players are the po most popular players, often. Uh, we've got Firmino here in number three, which is something I did not expect to happen. But I'm actually kind of slightly starting to warm towards Firmino as an FPL pick. Final game for Liverpool in uh, in what should be a dead rubber game, uh, assuming uh, Manchester United um, at least got a point against Chelsea. I don't know. I'm recording this video before the game, but I mean, obviously, um, oh, yeah, by the time this video comes out, you guys will know the Man United-Chelsea result. So, you know, maybe I'm just chatting absolute waffle right now. But yeah, if it's a dead rubber game, Firmino probably plays in that. Uh, we could get a little bit of rotation there among the Liverpool players. And we've got Dwight McNeil, so long as he's not playing left back and Everton don't play too defensively, maybe he could get something there. Erdegaard, we've got Trossard here and Jesus, actually. So, actually, genuinely, a few people opting for Arsenal players against Wolves. I actually kind of like that. And I think the Arsenal players is probably more the differential direction to go if you want to go that way. Like I said, a few people bringing Alvarez. We've got Vardy in here as well. That's an interesting one. Harvey Barnes. Uh, DeCorey there, another Everton player uh, to try and attack Everton versus Bournemouth in that final get, uh, game to hopefully save Everton from the drop. Uh, but yeah, Watkins at the bottom there as well, which is a kind of an interesting transfer in considering we were all removing Watkins like a few weeks ago. Now we all want him back in. Hey, I'm all, all, I'm all on board for it, guys. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, make some suggestions for your transfers. All right, so straight away, Erling Haaland to Harry Kane. It, it makes a little bit of sense, right? I mean, uh, if you don't really want Erling Haaland for this game, if you think he's going to get rotated, or you're not really looking to captain Haaland, then uh, maybe Harry Kane could be a better option for you. Uh, uh, to be fair, Erling Haaland not been getting too many FPL returns recently, but he has been getting the chances to. So maybe been a bit unlucky recently. Uh, but Harry Kane, consistent as always. If you can afford to do Isaac to Kane, that is definitely going to be a really good move for you as well. And if you can't, Isaac to Firmino might be an interesting uh, way 
play to move into the uh, the, the new high upside attackers kind of uh, vibe. Firmino, by the way, guys, when he plays, has been really good for Liverpool this season. He just hasn't really had many opportunities to play. So if he gets a start, uh, you know, this weekend against Southampton, Firmino could genuinely be a really good pick. So I'm absolutely back in the Isaac to Firmino pick. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed with myself that I haven't really picked out Firmino as a pick in previous videos this week because I'm actually kind of feeling this one now. So uh, yeah, let's make some more suggestions. Kaoru Mitoma to Eze, Grealish to Eze, McAllister to Eze, anyone you like, any midfielder you've got. If you want a new midfielder, your template uh, uh, experts kind of like recommendation for a midfielder for you to bring in is Eberechi Eze. Really easy to move some of your Bryson midfielders to this player. Uh, you could also do the Grealish to Eze move as well. Maybe that frees up a little bit of money for you to maybe make some other moves to get Harry Kane in potentially there as well. So you're going to have some different options there. Uh, you know, you could even potentially do Fernandez to Eze as well. Do Fernandez down to Eze and then maybe Isaac up to Harry Kane. Maybe that suits you a little bit more if you want to keep on holding on to uh, Erling Haaland, for example. There's different ways of doing things and I'm sure you guys can figure that out yourselves but uh, there are some suggested transfers based on our data anyway and that seems what the experts trends seem to be moving towards but we've still got to pick out a captaincy and guys it's an interesting week for captaincy it really really is okay guys so our number one captain pick for gaming 38 is Mo Salah but it's 35 percent 35 percent is the lowest percentage of our most popular captain pick we have had all season. So yes, salary is number one, but 35% to be number one captain pick at 35% is crazy low. Like we've not seen this at all in this series this season. It, it's, it's so low and that just kind of shows you how divided uh, everyone is on captaincy right now. Uh, we had one triple captain by the way this week guys. Uh, I didn't mention that before because I don't know if it's that relevant but the one triple captain is also on Salah but we have also got 30% captaincy on Harry Kane which is very very close to Salah but what's more interesting is our free hitters. So we've got six free hitters. Every single one of our free hitters is captaining Harry Kane. So what that kind of suggests to me is that yes, Salah is going to be the most popular captain pick, but that's probably because most people are going to have Salah. Whereas Harry Kane, on the other hand, because not everyone's going to have him, just because he's more difficult to get into your team, he's going to naturally have lower captaincy rates. But I do actually think that although it looks like Salah is the best captain based on this data, I think if you look at kind of behind the curtains a little bit, maybe Harry Kane is the best captain option so long as you have him. But if you can't get to him, that's fine. Salah's a really good alternative to that. Now, Erling Haaland is down at 15% which is super, super low for him. But still, you're always going to have a decent amount of people backing him. But there's a real drop-off between Salah, Kane, all the way down to Haaland at 15%. After that, we've just got a bunch of random players, really. So 4% on Eze, 2% on Fernandez, 2% on Bobby Firmino, 2% on Erdegaard, 2% on Trent Alexander-Arnold, 2% on Jamie Vardy. Where's that one come from? Hey, if you're back in Leicester to do the business against West Ham, I don't mind it. But we do have six. One percenters, and this is where things do get really, really crazy. So, six of our FPO experts are going for so, so a, 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 a captain that no one else is going for. So, we've got one person on Foden, interesting. One person on Madison, interesting. One person on Saka, yeah, interesting, but you kind of get it. One person on Son. All right, we're getting a bit wacky here. One person on uh, Ramsey, Jacob Ramsey, Aston Villa. Okay, wait for this one, guys, because we've got one left. One person is captaining Jordan Pickford. And I, I know, if I'm totally honest about this one, yes, I think Everton probably have the best chance of a clean sheet in Game Week 38, but I'm not backing this captain at all. And I doubt that this uh, expert is going to go through with this Pickford captaincy. I think they're going to change it last minute because there is no way, there's no way you can seriously captain Jordan Pickford in the final game week of the season. But they did say, in fairness, they're just trying to have some fun and catch up in some mini leagues. And I think that's the case with a lot of people. We are going to see a lot of crazy moves this week. Naturally, we're going to see a lot of crazy hits this week because people are all in different situations. Some people are trying to protect their rank. Some people are trying to chase their rank. And you are going to see some people going for some really wacky things to try and make some ground. Now, Actually, if you are someone who is happy with your rank or is just looking to gain a little bit of rank, I think going template and going safe actually could be the answer. And just depend on other people, uh, like our, our good friend, Captaining Pickford, count on those people around you making mistakes 
and therefore you might be able to uh, capitalise on that. Now, uh, if Pickford uh, gets a penalty save and a clean sheet, then maybe I'll eat my words on that one. But Salah, Kane, Erling Haaland are your main captains for this game week. And But we have got a decent amount of differential captains that you might be interested in too. And that is it for the season in terms of 100 experts videos. We've still got a couple more videos to come uh, before this season ends. Don't worry about that one. But yeah, there we go. 100 experts, 38 episodes, I think. Uh, crazy stuff. Hopefully you've enjoyed them. If you have, please do drop a like. It does mean a lot to me. Let me know what you thought about this series so far this year. And also let me know if there's any changes you would like to see to the 100 experts uh, series that you'd like to come in from next season onwards. Because I'm looking to uh, make a couple of changes to try and keep things fresh, but also improve things for you guys going into the new year. But aside from that, guys, I will see you tomorrow for my team selection video for Game Week 38. And until then, I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.